They're insolvent. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. In our lead story today, U.S. banks are panicking as the next financial crisis is about to start. And you're not going to believe what happened and why it's having such a major impact on the small banks, because we just found out about 300 of them are teetering on the edge of insolvency. Now let's head over to the conference board where we picked today's story up as we start out looking at what's going on in the U.S. economy, which is real important here because this all back feeds right into the banks and why their survival in the near term future is all but a certainty that many of them are not. And as we look to the conference board, what we see is the LEI or leading economic index for the U.S. fell yet again in November. But there's hope in the report because they say the U.S. LEI continued declining in November. Meanwhile, stock prices making virtually the only positive contribution to the index in the month. Of course, we'll talk about why that is toward the end of the show as housing and labor market indicators weakened in November, reflecting warning areas for the economy. The leading credit index and manufacturing new orders were essentially unchanged, even though we're starting to see signs from the regional Fed that what they're saying is the manufacturing sector is further declining, which is all pointing to a lack of economic growth. But as a result of all of this, the conference board still forecasts a short and shallow recession in the first half of 2024. And from the bank's perspective, that would be a huge blessing. But as you're about to see, what's going on with the banks is actually going to be the catalyst for the next U.S. financial crisis. So let's dig deeper into the LEI and why the conference board's so excited is because they're seeing the data start to rebound here, suggesting to them as their signal leads the U.S. economy by six months that perhaps a soft landing is baked into the cake. And maybe the reason we're actually seeing the Federal Reserve look to perhaps cut rates next year is because they think they've now done enough. This would be supportive of, again, the mythical soft landing. That is until the LAI turns down for a second time. As the euphoria on Fed pivot prospects ignore the lagging hangover and the impact of past hikes is still feeding through the real economy because there's this thing called the monetary lags. Now, if you ask the Federal Reserve, they will tell you they're long and variable. If you ask them what that means, they'll just tell you. They're long and variable. They don't know how long and they don't know how variable. What they do know is when everything starts to kick in and that happens. We'll show you the, what is really going on and what the Fed does. When this all starts to kick in, well, there's nothing they can stop the next financial crisis from happening. And over the past few years, money has been squeezed out of the market by central banks. Well, that's not exactly true. We'll show you why as they fight to get inflation surge under control. And that's made borrowing more expensive for governments, corporates, and consumers, and will keep denting spending well into the next year. Though the key part is we're in a debt-based economy, and what you need is debt to expand it. Now, of course, we talked about in the show yesterday how consumers have just have record levels of credit card debt because they can't get more money from the banks there. They're turning to these buy now, pay later, but this debt isn't leading to growth. That is a huge problem, as we're going to see. The bottom line is that Federal Reserve hikes are biting and will continue into 2024. Restrictiveness is not going away anytime soon, which is why perhaps, again, we're seeing this preemptive move by the Fed as they look to say, you know what, we're going to hit our soft landing target here. We think we nailed it. And so we want to cut a little bit just in case those lags kick in that perhaps things will offset. But the part the Fed seems to be missing, and they miss it every time, is a fact of what's going on in the banks. And here we can see the net percentage of domestic banks tightening standards for commercial industrial loans to firms of all sizes. This being one of our favorite charts on the show because what you see is anytime the blue line is over that horizontal black line, on net banks are tightening lending standards. And what that means is they're originating fewer loans. And in a debt-based economy, you need more loans. So what is the lag that the Fed sees is they look at it from a interest rate hiking perspective. What the lag actually is, is when you start start you know, taking money out of the economy, not in the sense that you're removing it, but you're not creating it up. What happened is you cannot support asset prices. You cannot support the growth rate. You cannot support all the debt. And if you do it for too long, well, everything kicks in. The system runs out of money. Asset prices come crashing down. The economy comes crashing down and the debt 
goes into a massive default, which is going to hit the banks that as we noted, about 300 of them are currently insolvent. As higher rates ripple through the economies, Bloomberg forecast says 2024 will be the weakest non-crisis year. Well, that's if we're lucky since the early part of the century. As huge debts mature in the coming years, refinancing may be too costly for businesses, even if central banks achieve a soft landing, leading to defaults and losses for lenders. And that's key is why I showed you the last chart. It's not that they can't refi or they don't want to. They will want to refi the debt. The issue is the banks may not do it and say, look, you've got to pay these down. You've got to pay them off. And these businesses are going to say, well, we just don't have the cash. But that's what happens when lending standards tighten. Consumers are already finding credit much harder to access. No surprise there. While regional banks face a huge hit. And this is coming from souring commercial real estate valuations. And again, this is just a function of when you pull money out of the economy by not creating enough of it. In fact, we're going to make the case of why the banks are actually destroying money now on top of the fact that the Fed is restricting the creation of credit. Because here you can see commercial industrial loans from all commercial banks. This is on a weekly basis, looking at a year-over-year -year rate of change. It's down to minus 1.3%. And these contractions coincide largely with recessions, with except to 2015-2016, which we almost had a global recession. But you can know where you see that contracting going below the black line across the horizon. There's usually a gray-shaded bar indicating, indeed, there's a recession because when banks create loans, when commercial banks create loans, new money is created in the economy. So on net, if you're seeing a contraction in commercial industrial lending, it means money is being destroyed. At the same time, you notice this is an issue. It pops up every time the banks constrict the creation of credit because the Fed inverts the yield and money curves. This is what they don't see. But the problem is it has a massive impact on asset prices, as you'll see in a little bit, and that's going to have a huge impact on the banks. The problem is they're insolvent. But U.S. bonds are the best bet run since March, as Fed's furred inflation gave boosted wages on rate cuts. But that's really not how the system works, as you're about to see, because it's prompted money managers to pile into treasuries. And now positioning is at extremes, as asset managers have the most bet on ultra-long bond futures, which tracked the 30-year maturity since back in August 2019. Now, the way the system works is if the system is coming down, and that's the issue here. You start to see asset prices fall. You start to see delinquencies rise. Interest rates do not magically go up. They start going down because the system, the monetary system itself starts to realize it's being starved of money and there's only one way to create it. And that's through new lending. And if higher interest rates don't lead to that creation of money, which it's not now, rates start to fall and in a huge way. And here you can see commercial industrial loans continuing the last chart against 10-year treasuries. That's shown in red. And what we can note is contractions, particularly big ones in commercial industrial lending, go right alongside with a drop in interest rates. You can see that here in the 90s. You see that in the dot-com bubble. You see that in global financial crisis. How about in 2015, 2016? You bet it happened again going into the pandemic. Remember, a global economy was slowing once again. This time, we see these massive bets pushing rates higher. That's shown here in red, the 10-year. But keep in mind, commercial industrial lending is going into contraction. There's a reason rates are falling. People have, in the short run, driven rates higher. But in the long run now, they're headed lower. And yes, if you're wondering, is it too late to take advantage of the rise in rates? Well, we've given you the tools. Let me show you how it's done. Because when you get at how the machines are positioned, you understand the technicals, you can make a ton of money, even on bonds. And here's our CTA Timer Pro report. Now, keep in mind, I made a mention to show yesterday that both these reports are going to get better. And their people said, can you make them easier to use? Can you just give us the signals? The answer is yes, we're going to do that. Should have it sometime in January. So I'm putting out 10 coupon codes for a free month because it may come with a price increase for new subscribers. We want you to lock it in as now get that free month before the change comes. But let's go back to November 2nd. What happened? The machine positioning because we run a historical overlay. So 
So when you see big extremes at a minus 100, minus 100, and then it short covers up like you're seeing here on November 2nd, that's a huge indicator that something is changing in a big way. And our report was designed to lead the machines as you typically uh, see on the Sunday show. When you pair that with our Momentum Timer Pro report, this looks at all those technical signals and determines when momentum has shifted. It matched that on November 2nd as the daily count switched to a buy. We tell our subscribers, if you have both reports, and this is what our most successful traders do, they look for one, they see the signal, they go to the other one. When it pairs up, they put in a buy at open trade. Right now, you'd be up 13.6% on the long bond alone, looking at the sky as this price could go up substantially. And yes, trading can be that easy. You too can be successful. And we get the new updates next month. You're going to want to lock in these prices now because it's probably going to come with an increase. Again, check out the description below because we know demands for the Fed's bank term funding facility grows to record high. So I wanted you to set the stage up here and show you that the economy is slowing, but there's optimism. Interest rates are telling us, wait a minute, no, the economy is getting worse because falling interest rates indicate growth and inflation is coming down. Commercial industrial lending is indicating that money is being destroyed from the system. So again, you need low rates and more lending. And the banks in turn are having more problems. They're panicking and they're turning to the Fed. As demand for the Fed's bank term funding program grows now again to record high, let's take a look. It's now at $131 billion this coming from last week. And pricing and more attractive rate butts is giving this thing an increase, at least as we're starting to see the media spin this because this is an emergency facility. I want you to understand that. The notion that banks are going here for funding should not be something they brag about, but there's concern. And because there's concern and nobody understands what's going on here, the media, as you're gonna see, is spinning this to say, look, it's just an arbitrage opportunity. There's nothing wrong with the banks. I tell there is. For the banks to drop in the Bank term funding program borrowing costs spells a larger arbitrage opportunity, one where institutions borrow from the facility before parking the proceeds in their accounts at the Fed to earn interest on reserve balances. That spread is now 52 basis points, matching the highest level since the Fed introduced the facility well back in March. Well, the issue here is if the banks needed cash, and they do, this is how they get them. They take those treasury securities, those mortgage-backed securities, they give them to the Fed for a short-term one-year loan. The problem is the facility ends in March. So why would the banks be running an arbitrage scenario right now? It doesn't make any sense. The media thinks that's what's going on. In reality, the banks are hemorrhaging cash in a big way, and as you're about to see, it's an issue of hundreds of them being insolvent. And then what happened just the other day? Well, it tells us that the banks are in dire shape. As small U.S. banks are increasingly at risk in commercial property slum, about 14% of all commercial real estate loans and 44% of loans on office buildings appear in, quote, negative equity, meaning the debt is now greater than the property value. And that raises the risk the borrowers won't repay because their stakes are wiped out. And that's an issue, according to this report, because what that means is if they walk away from these loans, and they're not doing this yet in a big way, but if borrowers start to walk away, it goes back to the banks that you're about to see they're insolvent and drawing more money from the Fed. What's going to happen in March when the program expires and the banks have to pay these loans back? Well, the problem is they don't have the cash. The distress can induce anywhere from dozens to over 300 mainly small regional banks join the ranks of banks at risk of solvency runs. This is a problem suggesting as we know that the bank term funding program is telling us these banks are indeed insolvent. Commercial property values have fallen 22% since the first quarter of 2022 when the Fed began raising rates, according to, of course, experts in the space. Office prices have plunged 35% as demand for desk space weakened following the wide adoption of remote work. And all this tells us is the banks are sitting on these loans. They're not being asked to revalue them yet. And what's going to happen in the first quarter and the second quarter of next year, a lot of these loans start to come due. They're going to hit the banks all at once. And you can see perhaps the reason they're going to the program now from the Fed is to show them we need this cash. We need it in a big way. Don't cancel it because it could be an all out financial crisis, perhaps as early as March. A 10% default rate on commercial real estate will result in about $80 billion of additional bank losses, which we know they don't have the money for, and an estimated $106 billion 
if the default rate climbs to 20%, meaning banks are going to fail in a big way. In the global financial crisis 10, 15 years ago, delinquency rates on commercial property loans peaked at about 9%, while charge-offs as such as loans hit 3.3%. But now no one's worried about it because they think the Fed has got this soft landing, everything's going to be okay, and now we turn to LA. This is what we're doing in downtown Los Angeles today, as LA's third tallest tower sells for a whopping 45% below its 2014 price. The vacancy rate there is now 30% for off buildings so you see I know a lot of these commercial real estate loans don't get comped right away the banks are not actually being forced to write down their existing book but if this is the new normal and these values are indeed coming down it's a massive problem for the small banks we know they're insolvent the Fed is not paying attention to this you want to make the case of why we're gonna have a financial crisis and rates are going back to zero you can take one look at all these banks an affiliate of Brookfield Corp, downtown's one-time largest landlord, defaulted on three office towers in this area alone this year. An added blow for sellers was a voter-approved five-and-a-half transfer tax on real estate transactions, greater than $10 million, that took effect on April 1st. And what this means is a new low basis and well-capitalized owner, Aon Center, will be competitively positioned to attract and retain tenants who desire a well-amenitized skyline tower in the heart of downtown Los Angeles. And that's exactly what it takes during recessions is you need everything to be written down so the economy can heal. The problem is when you constrict the creation of credit, asset prices just fall. And the main issue here is this building may not even be cheap enough at that value once we start to see a big wave of defaults build and we see these small banks that carry these loans just outright fail with potentially, again, 300 of them could go down. Of course, one other thing going down, well, that's the dollar. As the US economy slows, we see shorter the dollar is gaining favor after the Fed's great pivot. And many of you keep asking, why is stocks going up? Well, a lot of it has to do with the dollar going down. And the currency has suffered a pronounced slump in the wake of that confab when the Fed released an updated economic projections forecasting additional monetary easing next year. And that sent the dollar index tumbling the lowest since July. The dollar extended its drop on Friday after the Fed's preferred gauge of underlying inflation showed muted price gains, affirming the central bank's pivot toward interest rates cuts next year. So of course, the short dollar trade remains the place to go. But in an all-out financial crisis, watch the dollar just outright scream higher as everybody runs to safety, and you can see it coming. We perhaps are only months away from when this bank term funding program ends in March to seeing all these banks go insolvent, and that means the Fed's going to run to the rescue. They've got to cut rates, and if that happens, the U.S. economy, the global economy, and everything is going down with it. And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.